In this video, we'll explore the latest texture painting features in Blender 4.3. For beginners, I'll be doing a quick start guide, I'll be going through the new brushes, and I'll be breaking down useful features in some of the recent updates to Blender. So the easy way to texture paint things is to go across to the texture paint workspace up the top middle here. I'll zoom in on my cube. To paint on any object, you will need it to be unwrapped. Find out more about unwrapping in my other unwrapping tutorials. The default cube is automatically unwrapped, but if I try to paint, you'll notice that I can't paint, so I'm left clicking and I'm unable to paint. There's an error message down the bottom saying, missing textures detected, which is telling us that this has no image for us to paint onto. To illustrate this, I'll bring down a window at the top here, and I'll change this across to the shader editor. I'll press N on my keyboard to get rid of the side panel and zoom in. Now here's the base color up here, and we need an image texture in here that we paint onto. In order to create that nice and quickly, rather than adding it and hooking it up ourselves, we can go to the texture slots option in the middle of our viewport just here when in texture paint mode. So if I left click on that, I can add a new texture slot or paint slot. There's lots of different options depending on what you want to paint. Most of the time it will be base color. I can change the name here, the width and height just here. Often people want to double this to add a bit more resolution. There's an alpha channel here, which is for transparency. And here's the color that it will create when it's made. I'll press add and instantly you'll see the white texture appear down here in our image editor. And you'll see the new texture hooked up to our base color. If I open this up, you can just see there it's our material base color. So now I should be able to left click to paint on my cube and you can see it painting there. And you can also see it appear on my texture down here. Our brush controls are at the top here. If I middle mouse button, I can strafe across those. You've got the type of brush up here, which is exactly the same as our asset shelf down here, which is new to Blender 4.3. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. You've got radius and strength there. The F key is to resize your brush and shift F is to change the strength, which you can also find down here. The color palette is just here. So I'll bring my brightness up and go across to the blues, paint a bit on here, across to the greens, paint a bit on here, and the reds paint a bit up here. Now, one thing you might notice whilst I'm painting is that we're getting some stretch across our texture. As I move my brush, notice how it stays exactly the same. So we're doing a screen-based projection method, this is called. What I mean by this, if I jump across to the sculpting workspace, can you see how my brush adapts to the angle of the normals of my cube? in the direction of the face. Whereas texture painting, it's all flat, no matter what face it's on. And you can see on my texture over here that it really stretches across because of that. And on my cube, you can see that stretching across and then disappearing as it hits the edge. So when I paint with this red up here, we get a long thin line like so. That is one of the limitations of Blender as a texture painting tool at the moment. Hopefully they'll work on this in the future and it will be more like the sculpting workspace. Now the reason I've put some different colors on here is to show you how you can sample colors. Quite an important thing to do when you're texture painting. I'll just scroll down my menu slightly and you can see the colors clearly there and I've got the color palette here. I'll just open that up and create a new color palette. In the color palette, I can press the plus button here and that will add the current color to the palette. I can also press shift X and left click to add a color that I select in the viewport. And I can hold down shift X and move around these colors and you can see my picker changing as it moves. Now I can just press shift X without left clicking and that will change the actual color but not add it to my palette. So shift X will just change the color, shift X and left click will add it to my palette. So shift X is the keyboard shortcut you need to remember. So now let's talk about the paint brushes. I've started again with my cube but I've added a texture slot to it. Now our brush shelf down the bottom here is called the asset shelf and brushes are now assets. That's useful for creating new brushes and saving them, importing, exporting, and so on. I can bring out this panel if I hover over the edge here and pull it upwards. I can extend it like this and you can see some extra brushes down here. I can change the size of these assets with this button here and I can increase the size. I can include the names as well. So I make them nice and big so you can see. The default brush is the paint hard brush and that's a type of draw brush which you can also get to here. It's a little bit confusing because these icons here correspond to different brushes, but this draw brush here corresponds to lots of different draw brushes, as you can see. I'll go back to the paint hard for now because that's the default. It kind of makes this tool panel down here a bit redundant, really. I can see the name of my brush just up the top here, and I can click on that to get to the asset browser again. And as we've mentioned before, these tools across the top here, you can see in the tool panel down here, so I can click on this 
and again, get to the brush aspect of the asset browser. So let's talk about the different brushes. I'll move up to white and move across to the red for now. And I'll move across to my pen tablet because that does make a difference in this case. The paint hard, if I paint with my pen tablet, is a simple brush with hard edges. The paint hard pressure, when I click on that, you can see it change over here, but you can also see this button here enabled and that's tablet pressure sensitivity for the radius. So now when I press lightly, you can see the size changes. And if I press hard, it changes again. So I can change through my paint stroke. So the paint soft, if I click on that, you can see it changes the strength with the pressure. So light pressure and then hard pressure. And then we have the paint soft pressure, which is both of them that you can see there and you can see the difference that, that makes when I paint. So those are the different types of paint brush. Underneath that, we've got the blur brush. So I'll click on the blur brush just here. And if I use this, you can see it blurs the painting that I've made. Kind of good for blending colors together. Next, we have the clone brush. Now this relies on your 3D cursor. If I move the 3D cursor with shift right click, when I start painting now, it will paint whatever underneath the 3D cursor. So if I shift right click on this area and start painting, you can see that it's painting the same thing as I paint across that's over on the side there. So a useful tool there. I'll go to the fill brush next, which we can see here and down here. That's fairly straightforward. You've got your strength here. The strength of one will fill the whole cube in with that color. And of course I can reduce the strength, go across to the blue and it's got some slight blue to it now. I'll put the strength back up to one. I'll go across to white-ish and fill it in. Next, there's the erase brushes. So the erase brushes are like the draw brushes in the sense they have erase hard, hard pressure and erase soft. I'll stick on the erase hard for now. And if I start drawing, it actually erases my cube. And you can see that over the side here, it's got this transparent texture. In order for this to work, when you add your base color, so if I go to the color slots at the top here, go to add base color, you must make sure that the alpha's ticked in order to have a transparent background in your texture. They're known as alpha channels. I'll cancel that. Now, if at any point I go back to my drawing brushes, let's go across to the pinks this time and draw this in. You can see I can draw over it there and I've got no holes in my mesh anymore, I don't think, although there's a tiny one just there. <laughs> now, I quite like these erase brushes, but for many people, it's not what they're expecting. They're expecting to be able to erase this pink and get this background color here. That would kind of work on a layer based system if the back layer was white and the foreground layer was pink but we don't have that kind of system here. And you can set those sort of things up in the shader editor. It's a little bit awkward. The easier way to erase is actually just to pick this background color. So shift X to pick this background color. And then in a sense, I am erasing the pink. So use your color picker in those terms. So that's the erase brushes. Let's go across to the smear brush. I haven't actually mentioned that one yet. It's similar to the blur brush, but it can smear and pull a color over the top of the other one. So I'm on the pinks at the moment and I can smear that across to this white over here or from the white, I can smear that across over the pink. It's actually slightly easier to blend colors with the smear than it is the blur brush. So the last brush then is the mask brush. If I click on this and try and paint, you can see it says missing stencil detected at the bottom. What we need to do is like we had to create a texture down here and in here to paint on for our base color, you do the same for the mask. So we go up to the top here on the drop down, say we want a new stencil, I'll call this mask one and press OK. Then when I start painting on my cube, let's say I don't want to paint on this bit. Oh, let's just change the strength quickly up to one. So it's nice and clear. If I go now to my paint hard brush, and let's go across to the blues and start painting across here. You can see on my texture down here that I'm unable to affect this area that's been masked. If I want to get rid of that, I can go up to my mask here and close it down. Now, when I start painting, I can paint in that area, which you can see here. So that's how we can use masking. It's very useful because I can go across to the mask brush. In the drop down, I can reuse the mask I've already drawn. And incidentally, if you want this saved with your file, you'll need to press the shield button here, fake user, to make sure it saves this texture. But I can also create a new one. So I can have mask two, create a new image, maybe draw down here. And then I can't paint on this. When I go to my paint hard brush, I'm unable to paint on that. And I can go up to my stencils and choose the different masks if I need to. Remember to save this one so it saves my file or just close them both down and start drawing and I'm fine. So that's the mask brush. So there's all the brushes, but how do we edit them and add a new one? Well, if I right click on the paint hard, I can duplicate this asset. And maybe I'll call this rock brush and press save. So I've created a new rock brush here. 
And in the brush settings, I'll change the color back to white. I'll bring the saturation all the way down this time. And let's add a texture to this. So you can add textures to your brushes under the texture settings here. I can click on a new texture. Unfortunately, I can't change it in here. I have to go to the texture panel for the texture properties and then open up a new image. So I'll open an image, go to my textures. Incidentally, you can bookmark folders just by clicking the plus sign here. And let's find a rock texture. I'll choose one that I got from textures.com back when it was free. So I've opened that up. I need to go back to my tool settings now. And when I scroll down, we should be able to see the texture pop in there. That's great. There's different types of mapping you can use. And if I start painting, you'll be able to see that brush. Looks a little bit rubbish at the moment. We can change, if I minimize the texture and open up the stroke, the type of stroke method at the moment, it's space. If I change this to something like anchored, I can click and drag and bring out my rock texture like so, and I can draw over my shape. So I've got my cool rock brush that I'm really happy with. All I need to do now to save it is right click and save changes to asset. And you must remember to do that. So any changes you make in here, let's say I'll just call this rock in fact, rather than rock brush, make sure you right click and save the asset if you want those changes to be updated and saved. And the great thing is now that I can open up a new file. So file new general, it does ask you if you want to save your modified images. And it's worth pointing out that any image with a star on it like this, you need to make sure you save them before you close down the file. I don't need to, so I'll get rid of that. Go back to the texture workspace, add a new material slot, zoom in on my cube, open up my brushes so we can see my new rock brush just there. When I start drawing, it doesn't work because I need to actually change the color back to white. And there's my rock brush. So there we have it, texture painting within Blender, quick start guide with all the useful features. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.